majority of your gunfights, you will be in 60, 40 advantages or disadvantages. All that means is one team is always going to be in the advantage because they're on defense and one team's always going to be in a disadvantage because they're on offense. So clearly we have defense, offense, and S&D control, but it also exists in hard point. So I'm randomly going to click somewhere uh, for hard point that happened today on terminal. And as I randomly click somewhere, I'm going to now press pause. And immediately we can kind of already understand that there's one team that is basically in a defensive position. And that's going to be Miami Heretics. The reason why Miami Heretics is in a defensive position right here or a 60-40 advantage is because, one, they're up in lives, but what's most important is they have objective control. Number two, Lucky is already inside of the hard point right now, and all he has to do is literally sit in a corner, and the enemies will have to push him no matter what. Now, here's another reason why Heretex is in an advantage, a 60-40 advantage, is because now we have number three right here, Vickle. He could very well just have an AR out, and as long as he's pre-aiming down this one line, that's the only spot that the enemies can push from. Which I'd like to predict that, you know, the enemies should be spawning back here and they're going to run across. Uh, but this is my point, is... If you guys have objective control, you're in a 60-40 advantage. The enemies have to push you. Literally just hold the pregame, wait. They're going to push you. You're going to win that gunfight. And um, ideally, number six is going to push in. And of course, he does kill him. But we do get the trade. And now, once again, Vickle is in the hard point. Number four, he's holding that pregame to get all that damage down. And we're still in the defensive position we're in a 60 40 advantage the team uh heretics they could literally sit in this corner they could you know lay down and play aggressive and hold an angle they could sit in this corner they could sit in this corner they could lay down and hold the pre-aim here uh the player over here he could sit in this corner on this head glitch over here on this head the point that i'm trying to get across is there's several spots that you can sit and the enemies they can only basically push out of here push out of here, and then push out of here. Which, again, when you're on defense, you literally just gotta look at one spot and you clear out all those spots. So when you guys are playing in ranked play, eights, whatever it may be, when you have the objective, the enemies have to push you. So you could just play the easy gunfight by holding a pre-aim and win it. Offense team, right? What about if you're on the 40, you know, 60 disadvantage? And that's where I would just say, obviously, you got to use your grenades and just work up the map. You're in a disadvantage on purpose. You just got to work as a team now. So a good way to like work as a team is you could basically have one guy right here baiting the entire time, getting information, not trying to die. And then because he's not trying to die, he sees that the enemy is playing on this head glitch right here. And because he calls that out, now uh, we have a teammate right here that challenges out after our teammate right here throws grenades at him. And it's just, it requires more coordination, oh, more yeah. teamwork, and it's just way harder than, you know, playing on defense. Um, and that's why whenever you're on offense, it feels like gunfights are impossible and you are getting unlucky. It's because you are, <laughs> like, you are unlucky. You're starting out with bad luck. We talked about 60-40s. There's also 50-50 gunfights which these are pretty normal. You're going to run into these in like public match gunfights. Uh, whenever you're rotating, um, you're going to run into 50-50 gunfights. So if we're rotating to new hard point, like normally you might run into a 50-50 um, just because of timings, but you will definitely run into 50-50 gunfights on like S and D. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so this is, this is like a 50-50 right here. So this is what I meant by rotating is this guy shot right here and number seven shot right here, number seven rotated down and then number three rotated down. And you guys already saw how like number three is looking in the opposite direction and like this guy is like aiming on him. This is what I meant on how it's like a 50-50 where the player makes a move, you make a move, uh, it's, it's a toss up. Um, we could say that, you know, Vickel has high ground and he could, you know, jump off and challenge him, but mostly, 
this is the point I'm trying to get across is it's a 50 50 for a reason. Just like right here, this is a 50 50. Um, just because number one, he really doesn't know when that player is going to challenge top eskies. He just kind of has to get the right timing. So the last thing uh, that we did not talk about yet is ego challenges. Now, ego challenges, these are challenges that you are taking that you have no business winning. Where when you're on offense and you're challenging a 40-60 gunfight, that's an ego challenge right there. Because we already talked about how it requires teamwork to break a setup. So if you're just flying in, that, that's an ego challenge. Um, now. There are good ego challenges. Perfect. So right there, number five gets a kill. This is important. So number five gets a kill and immediately he's already flying, trying to look for a two piece. And this is why I said ego challenges are sometimes good because once again, look, number five, ego challenging again. Um, and ego challenging is good when you have a teammate near you because you guys can just like bounce off of each other and try to like kill an enemy. But you should almost never ego challenge by yourself or ego challenge when um, it's just unnecessary. But like when it is necessary, it is good. Um, but this was the types of gunfights. I'd like to move on from that now. So the reality is, is you guys are playing online and I gotta tell you guys, ping is king. Your ping will more than likely affect the way you play your matches. So if you guys are playing on like a 70, 60 ping versus like a 20 ping, you're going to want to make sure you take like zero ego challenges and you're going to want to play like safe, right? And you're going to want to try to rotate early, play defense, get into a position, play a credit corner, hold a pre-aim, play for that kill. Because you on a 70 ping versus an enemy who's on a 20 ping or lower, you're, you're pretty much always going to lose that gunfight. The enemy team because they have high ping, they have a higher chance of like, you know, winning crazy gunfights, uh, which is a reason why like sometimes you guys may get three bulleted, even though it felt like you shot the enemy with 20 bullets. It's just, it's usually ping. <laughs> um, and another thing about that ping is peeker's advantage, where if there's a player on 20 ping and you're on 70 ping and you're holding a pre-aim, if this guy runs around the corner, he is basically going to see you first because he has a better ping and he's challenging around the angle. He's going to see you first and he's going to kill you in like three bullets or it's going to feel like he killed you in three bullets, even though you shot him with eight. And this is what I meant again on how when you hop into a game, you got to look at your ping and realize what kind of advantage or disadvantage are you going to be in? How should you play? Um, and in the future, it'd be more like you would sit up here and you know you're on a 70 ping. So when a guy flies out, you probably don't challenge him. Like you just see him and then you get behind cover just so you can give the call out. So this teammate can like look at him and wait for him to push up. And then you can just do something else, right? Like look P1 or maybe you could look uh, his cross all the way out over here. And then ideally this enemy pushes out and then uh, your teammate kills him. Now, I would say if you guys have like a 20 ping, so if you guys have a 20 ping and this guy has a 70 ping, oh yeah, absolutely. You could challenge that. I would always challenge that. I mean, if you guys are on 20 pings and 10 pings, that's like the only time like ego challenges might be good as well. <laughs> uh, just because ping is king uh, and it's very important and it tells you more than likely how your gunfights are going to go in a game and how you should be like playing. The next thing I want to talk about we know the types of gunfights. We know when to prepare for a gunfight. And we know that when we're attacking, we have to be coordinated. Now let's talk about decision making and like what is the right play to be made in a current situation. Um, and this is where I would say you guys should always rewatch your gameplay because there's really only four things you guys can do and four things that the enemies can do. So as we randomly click somewhere, on uh let's just randomly click on this sub base hard point perfect so right now number five just died and number two is sitting over here top server playing for p1 so i'm going to assume that this player top p2 
there's four things he can do, right? Um, so you would look at the kill feed, you would realize, holy crap, Lucky is sitting top server. Because Lucky is top server, there's four things he can do. He can go right. He can go left. He could just stay still and literally just stay up here. Or he can just, you know, push forward. Um, very rarely anyone would go back. More than likely, he's just going to sit still because these guys are about to win. So with that information, this player over here, let's say you guys in real life were number six, right? You guys would realize, okay, I'm number six. Number two is just going to be playing that high ground. I'm going to try to play the high ground and play for that gunfight. And like when you look at your mini map, that is a decision you can make. We have number four versus number seven. And it's the exact same thing. These guys both know where each other are. They can either sit still. They can go right. They can go left. They could push up middle or obviously sit still. And same thing for the enemy. He can go on the left side of this tank. He could go on the middle and like jump up. Or he could try to push up the right. So right now, if you guys were playing a match and you guys are journey, or if you guys are awaking and you look and you see this player, just know that he, there's only really four things he can do. And as long as he's trapped there, you guys can now decide, all right, I think because he has way more cover on the left and he's one shot, he's probably going to be trying to move towards the left. So I'm going to push up the right um, so I can keep my distance and then I can try and kill him. We understand that Vivid, he got this kill and there's really only two things he can do, push forward or go backwards. And obviously uh, this player right here, he's trying to push up and play for this trade. Now, the second that these trades go down, this team right here can understand, holy crap, the enemy team, they're playing A. They're either going to push through A, they're going to stay still, or they're going to rotate back, or they're going to try to push up middle. Um, again, like very rarely people push up middle. It is a play that happens. That's why I talk about it. Uh, but most of the time people go right, stay still, or they go left. And right here, that's exactly uh, what we can do. If we are um, rocker right now, we can sit here and say, all right, guys, we played a trade in plane. These guys are going to think we're going A. Let's go the opposite direction. And for heretics, heretics, they could sit there and go, all right, these are the three, four things that the enemies can do. Um, here's what we should do. We should both double, you know, push up middle, hit the left side, stay still, or hit the right side. And as we obviously see, we see um, how three and four, they end up pushing middle. And the reason why they push up middle is it traps them right here. And you guys can see how uh, number two and uh, all of us trap them in plane, as you guys can see that. Um, press play. Number four pu pushes up middle because he knows this player's over here. And I just want to point that out again. Like the second that number six shot, he could either stay still, push left, go back, or middle. And then number four said, all right, bet I can either push him or I can try to go for this middle play. And he went for the middle play and it worked. And like, this is literally all I'm trying to say is like, once you know where an enemy is, there's four things they can do, four things you can do. If you didn't see them go left, if you didn't see them go middle, they probably went right. If they didn't go right, middle or left, they're probably just staying still then. These enemies, once again, they can either sit still they can push out left, they can push out right, or they can like try to go middle, and he's cutting this off. So right now, heretics, they know that the enemies can only do two things, go middle or go out the back plane. And um, ideally, we're gonna see how we're probably just gonna all like triple up this side. I would've liked to see like this guy try to come up over here and trap them, uh, but we could press play and just see how this plays out, um, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, they're just all trying, just trying to triple up the side. And once again, uh, Rocker, they are on defense. Um, they're in the 60-40 advantage because the enemies have to push them. But as you can see, uh, Heretics, they have excellent teamwork. They took their time, cleared everything out, won the trades, won the round. 
Um, they're also up in a 3v2 advantage, so the trades should go in their favor. All right, finally, the last thing we're going to talk about is your mechanics, you know, how to practice, you know, how to activate aim assist, center, etc. All the stuff you already see on YouTube videos, we're going to talk about that right now. Obviously, we're going to, you know, share it through my perspective with what I think is most important to help you guys win. So the first important thing is always go to game setup, go ahead, switch it over to free for all, go to the default game rules and switch the time limit to about 45 minutes, switch that score limit to a thousand, go ahead and skip the infill, switch over to player. And if you want to, you can bump up the max health to make you um, obviously have to hit more shots. You could just keep it at 150 and then always make sure you have radar always on especially on constant or at least fast sweep. Now, once you have that said, I would highly recommend play on the map that you guys aren't comfortable with. Yes, if you guys feel like you suck at invasion, play invasion. If you suck at high rise, Karachi, uh, literally any map like Skid Row. If you feel like you lose gunfights, load up on that map so you can practice those gunfights. Very, very important. Um, so I, I would say a map that a lot of people kind of struggle with, I think, is usually like probably uh, Karachi. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and load up the free for all. Um, one last thing, of course, you would want to put on bots, which you go over here to this plus sign under your name. You put the bots to about, you know, seven, maybe 10, and then you can switch the difficulty to veteran. I prefer, you know, bots who shoot because my theory is if you can crap on veteran bots, you can eventually crap on, you know, <laughs> a majority of players, I feel. Um, so now once we have that, you just click start the match. Once you're in game, we're going to talk about the mechanics that I think are the most important to winning gunfights. Now, the first and most important thing is when you see an enemy or you get shot at, most of the time, you're going to want to make sure you're behind cover. Because if you're behind cover, you break that line of sight. And now you offer yourself to challenge left, challenge right, Maybe you could try to wall bang him or you can just stay still and make him push you, right? Um, now, when you get behind cover, this is where you need to make sure you start strafing and hitting the enemy as you strafe out of cover. So if I see this enemy, I get behind cover, I'm aiming at him, and then as I strafe, I shoot, and ideally, you're always going to get first shot. So this is already the most important thing. Just get behind cover when you see an enemy or you get shot just so now you have that opportunity to go left, go right, um, you know, center through the wall and then strafe out and then shoot them. Just try to give yourself an, an advantage, right? Now, when it comes to the actual mechanics, every single gunfight you guys are in, you need to be moving this left stick 1000% of the time. If you are in a game, a 10 minute game, beginning to end, you need to be moving this left stick the entire time. You could be doing it clockwise. You could be doing it counterclockwise. You could go left, right, whatever it may be. You just need to always be moving this. Even if you run into a wall, keep pushing your left stick into the wall so you get aim assist. If you sit in a corner, push your left stick into the corner so you get aim assist. If you drop shot, if you jump shot, always be moving that left stick. If you're sitting on a head glitch, push that left stick forward so you have aim assist. And I'll go ahead and just push up so you can see it right here. Uh, right here. And as you see that, my character started to track onto the enemy without me even moving my right stick. So using this left stick 100% of the time, super, super important. All right, now let's talk about centering. So obviously you always wanna be centering where you expect the enemies, but what's most important, make sure you're just always centering on center mass because ideally your recoil will give you the headshots. And I want to tell you guys that right now, pro players, they're not going for headshots. They're not really aiming for them. They're just aiming center mass. Maybe some players are aiming a little bit more above, like next to the shoulders, but pretty much every single player, they are just letting the recoil give them the headshots and they're not really controlling it. The only time they really control the recoil is if it's a super long range gunfight, like all the way over there and they're on a head glitch, or then that's when you're probably going to have to pull down on the right stick a little bit. Um, but I would basically say most of your aiming is 95% with the left stick and only 5% with the right stick. Um, and as you can see, I'm barely moving my right stick as I shoot these bots. Now, another thing about centering 
is yes, we are centering at center mass and we are just letting it rip. But another thing you can do is stutter aiming and stutter aiming just helps you resetting your aim uh, much easier. So right now, instead of just kind of like flicking towards these enemies while aiming in, did you see how I miss shots right now? Instead of flicking, flicking and flicking, what you could do is you could kill out, aim, aim back in, out, aim, aim back in. And just out aiming, aiming back in, what happens is you take that little blue dot and instead of putting this little blue dot onto the targets, now you just out aim and you just have to make sure your crosshair is on the target. Make sure your crosshair is on the target. Make sure your crosshair is on the target. And usually you activate aim assist. Um, and I would go as far as to say, even if you miss shots, you should always try to out aim and aim back in. And ideally your game is going to try to lock on to the nearest enemy that you see. Um, and of course, make sure you're always strafing the entire time to have that aim assist. One other thing about centering is obviously not only do we, you know, have the recoil give us headshots, but if you're also doing jump shots, jump shots is how you're going to get headshots as well, right? Um, so literally just aim at center mass. Don't pull down the stick at all. But when you jump, it is going to basically give you a headshot. Um, so jumping really good to get headshots. I would highly recommend probably the best mechanic you guys can learn is jump shotting, jump shotting mid gunfight, strafe jumping out of cover to kill an enemy. Um, even slide canceling is good to slide cancel out of cover, but for the most part, just jumping is probably the greatest thing you can do for your gunfights. Now, the last few things I want to talk about centering is of course, whenever you see an enemy and you get behind cover. Ideally, you want to remember where that last enemy was so you can just, you know, aim through the wall. And when you strafe out, you can shoot them. Um, I call this centering like a hacker. And really all it is, is you remember the last spot where the enemy was, right? So if that enemy, if I see the enemy and I'm like, oh crap, he's right there. And I get behind cover and I'm going to aim there, challenge out and ideally, you know, get first shot. So a big reason why you're always playing behind cover is obviously you do break that line of sight so you can go left, right, stay still, or maybe, you know, try to like do a different play. Uh, but most of the time, I will definitely say that when you get behind cover, just make sure you're limiting your hitbox where the enemies can't really see you. I see so many gunfights where people are like on a head glitch, yet they push up too far and now you see half of their body and they die. And they're like, what the heck? I had the head glitch. Why did I die? And it's like, not really. No. So they're like pushed up against the wall like this. And it's like, if you really want to use the head glitch, you should get away from the head glitch. And like, you can probably crouch. And now you have this head glitch right here. Right. Um, or just simply being further away and then like using a wall like right here. So using this cover and using this cover, like literally just using these two pieces of cover and like just having this one guy all the way over there, he could only see a slither of our body yet. We could see his whole entire half body. That's just another like thing you should really be mindful of is make sure your hitbox is small so the enemies can't kill you, right? The last few things I want to leave you guys with is understanding that gunfights only make up 10% of what a good Call of Duty player is. There are several matches, there's several players who have won matches by dropping only, you know, seven kills, zero kills, four kills. And it just goes to prove that kills really don't matter that much and it really only matters about 10 percent of the game um either way when you learn this game more and more when you learn the spawns when you learn where people are going to go when you learn the patterns of routes and how people like to play eventually you're going to know if you are going to win or lose a gunfight 90 percent of the time and that is something very important that a lot of people should know is Eventually, the more you practice, the more you are going to know if you are going to win or lose a gunfight before you even get into it. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And please let me know if you have any questions. I am always happy to help. Either ask me in my YouTube comments or feel free just to hit me up in any of my links in my description below. Thank you so much and peace.